Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to review the original Luigi's Mansion from the GameCube. As I'm recording this, I've only played 5 hours of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. And while I waited to get my hands on Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, I've played the original from the GameCube for the first time through Dolphin Emulator. And I have thoughts on it. First of all, I didn't grow up with the GameCube, so I did not start off with the original. I started off with Luigi's Mansion 2 on the 3DS, so I wouldn't have known what the original Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube was like compared to 2. This may sound like a controversial opinion, but my opinion on the original Luigi's Mansion is a bit different to a majority. I do respect classic games, I just think Luigi's Mansion is a flawed classic, if you get what I mean. Why? You're about to find out. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? For the gameplay, the gameplay is exactly what you would expect from a Luigi's Mansion game. But it felt a bit weird having some abilities missing. I understand why they are not present, but I feel like it was a bit odd not having them there. The game revolves around you exploring a mansion that Luigi won in a contest he didn't enter. He explores the mansion while catching ghosts with the Poltergust 3000. The puzzle design in the game in Luigi's Mansion is a mix of challenging, frustrating, and underdesigned. While some bosses like Bulasus take a while to figure out, and bosses like the final boss I found frustrating, especially since there is a big issue regarding backtracking in the game, because if you die in a boss, you go back to the entrance of the mansion, which takes up too much time, especially since dialogue and cutscenes aren't skippable, which you don't need to repeat a cutscene if you have already sat through it before. The only reason I would say undesigned within the puzzle design is because the element abilities that Luigi obtains in areas 2 and 3 are underutilized. And while I think this was a cool gimmick, I feel like not that many areas in the game use them. One area of the gameplay I would like to talk about here is the controls. I think the controls have aged poorly since 2001. The only reason why is because it's frustrating that you can't invert the controls to go in the direction you push the analog stick in. And while Luigi's Mansion 2 HD does allow you to aim the poltergeist in the direction you point the stick in, the original Luigi's Mansion just didn't have it, and it was just frustrating. And even if the controls haven't aged well, I have heard from people that if you play it with an actual GameCube controller, I didn't because I played it on an emulator, the triggers are analog, so depending on how far you press on the triggers, it will affect the volume of the Poltergeist 3000 suction ability. That's one positive with the controls, especially for a game from 2001. I do think in terms of difficulty that Luigi's Mansion is frustratingly difficult, especially with the poorly aged controls. The boos are frustrating to chase with no indicator on the map to locate where they are. There is the radar on the Game Boy Horror, but that wasn't enough which is frustrating because I had to catch 40 of them before going to the final boss at all. And what doesn't help is the blackout section of the game where there's too many ghosts, I mean like a scarce scraper amount of ghosts that you have to deal with, and it's overwhelming. The only other frustrating part I can even say about this game is the amount of backtracking you have to do if you die and forget to save in a specific area. While I don't think the overall gameplay of Luigi's Mansion is bad, I just think it has a few flaws in there which make it more difficult to play on modern hardware. Now with the gameplay out of the way, 
let's talk about the graphics. For a game that released in 2001, it actually does look really good visually. Although Luigi's design doesn't compare to modern Luigi, this version of Luigi is expressive, especially with the character animations and expressions, which is why I think the GameCube is one of the most underrated consoles, because its games have cartoon level expressiveness. And if there's one thing that Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS did wrong, it's replacing the character models, but not the character animations. While I do think there is a lack of theming throughout the mansion, in terms of the themes of the different rooms, with all of them having similar styles to each other, apart from the basement and the attic, it makes up in that department with the portrait ghosts fit in the atmosphere of each room. Even if portrait ghost fights get repetitive, the standout for me in the mansion is the ice room in the basement where the floor is slippy, which does add a bit of challenge to that room's portrait ghost. Luigi's Mansion makes a great use of lighting and shadow effects throughout the game, and that's why I recommend playing it with your screen at the lowest brightness possible for the best experience, because it makes the game look darker. I do think the character models of the ghosts look good visually for a 2001 game, especially with the translucent effect on each ghost. But copy and pasting it into a game that released today, it wouldn't look that great visually if I'm honest. Now moving on to the characters, if I'm going to be honest, the cast of characters really isn't that big, so there isn't really that much to talk about. So starting off with the major characters, we have the titular character, Luigi. Luigi's Mansion does play a big part on who Luigi is as a character, since in the games he is portrayed as more cowardly than Mario, and I don't really need to talk about Mario himself, since he barely has screen time in the game to even explain what he even does in the game. Professor Egard, who acts as the scientist, is the one who provides Luigi with the Poltergeist 3000 and does make the story more enjoyable. King Boo, the main villain of the game, does have fair writing behind him, and after all, this is a Mario game so I'm not really expecting anything complex or anything like that, such as the reason King Boo is evil. But I think King Boo does have a good personality, but honestly, I preferred his writing and final battles in Luigi's Mansion 2 and 3 compared to the first one. I don't know if this is depicted as lazy, but I feel like the final battle was wasted because King Boo was in a Bowser suit for most of the fight, without showing the potential of his skill set until the sequel, and I get that this is a game from 2001, but I feel like the final boss fight felt a bit too short, and that's why I think King Boo is less interesting in the first Luigi's Mansion compared to its sequels. Before we move on to the story itself, we are going to talk about the enemy and portrait ghosts. Talking about the enemy ghosts first, I feel like that the enemy ghosts, regardless of their colour, are all too similar to each other in terms of design. They do a good job at providing jump scares, but after all, I feel like their designs are too similar and lack personality. Because Luigi's Mansion 2 does do a good job at expressing personality within the designs of the enemy ghosts, apart from the possessors of course. The only ghost I can say has a decent design is probably the garbage can ghost. There are shy guy inspired ghosts in the game but ignore them. The enemy ghosts aren't that well designed due to the lack of personality. And now for the portrait ghosts. I like the designs of the portrait ghosts and their personalities, but fighting them in the same way in each room kind of felt a bit repetitive. I like how some of them have their own vulnerability methods, but I feel like the ones that become vulnerable when shining a flashlight against them felt less interesting to fight. Sir Weston's fight is the one that stands out to me because the floor is made of ice. And even if 
their boss fights aren't well designed. I think that Luigi's Mansion has a decent roster of characters to work with here. Even if the main characters had better writing in their sequels compared to the original game. And now, to end the review, since I've stopped putting summaries in my review videos, we have the story. The story of Luigi's Mansion isn't really that complex. It doesn't need to be. Even if I wished it was complex, it doesn't need to be. But I feel like that the game being too short, it has issues with its pacing. I will explain the pacing issues in a second, but the story revolves around Luigi, who wins a mansion in a contest he never even entered, which he then finds out that his mansion is haunted, and Mario has been captured by King Boo, leaving Luigi to explore the mansion to uncover the secrets while capturing ghosts throughout the mansion. But what about the pacing issues? Where do they come in? Well, the pacing is mainly affected by the element medals and Mario's items. There are only three element medals in the game, and all of them are obtained within the span of two chapters, which I feel like they could have spaced it out a bit more, like the fire element medal in area one and the ice element medal in area three. Basically spacing them out to one per area instead of rushing to obtain them all. But why do Mario's items affect the pacing? First up, a fortune teller ghost by the name of Madame Clairvoyer, who will promise to tell you the location of Mario if you had all five items in hand. And it doesn't really take long to obtain them all. And if there was five areas in the game and not four, I think one Mario item per area would be fairly paced instead of rushing through it. And that's why I think the game has issues with the pacing. The story was okay, but I think with a remake, without changing too much of the story, the pacing could be fixed by stretching it out from around 6 hours to 14, around the same length as Luigi's Mansion 2 and 3. Luigi's Mansion is not a masterpiece like most people say it is, but I think it offers a fair amount of exploration, well-designed puzzles, and while the ghost variety is lacking, there is a few to go around and catch. And even with the few flaws that the game has, I think Luigi's Mansion is a game that you should play at least once. And with that, I give it the play then sell perk. And overall, I give Luigi's Mansion a 7 out of 10. Even as my least favourite in the Luigi's Mansion trilogy, it's still a solid game that I recommend playing at least once. I do think that this game is in urgent need of a remake before Luigi's Mansion 4. I mean, I don't mind waiting longer for a Luigi's Mansion 4 if they just go back to the first game to address some of these issues, because I think some elements of the first Luigi's Mansion haven't aged that well since its 2001 release. That's why I think the next Luigi's Mansion game should be a remake of the first and then Luigi's Mansion 4. So guys, what did you think of my review of Luigi's Mansion? My review of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD will be coming in August. Since I am going to talk about it in depth, it's gonna be a while until my review actually comes out. But my first video in August after all is my review of Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8, out.
见你。